Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. It seems the Saturday girl is completely out of her depth and had to be educated with regards to policy. She's moaning, of course, that uh, Westminster aren't fawning and falling to their knees and obeying the SNP with their requests to have all the cars being done by 2030 and to ban gas uh, boilers immediately kind of thing. That, that general area. It is a very strange position that they take. They want to go ahead and do these things earlier, as they say. And yet they are the party that's so desperate to chum it up to get into the EU. Uh, and they're saying, oh yes, look at us, we're going to plough ahead 2030. But the EU's figure is 2035. So they are immediately at variance with not only the British government, but the EU as well. It makes joining the EU a bit harder if you were as an independent Scotland. We're having different rules. But hey, who am I to comment on the stupidity of these people? It's quite clear and obvious that they are very, very stupid. And this woman, who is very, very uh, un inexperienced, undereducated, certainly beyond the capability of the role she's been given. And she's now been given all those extra roles. So none of them can possibly be done properly. So it's not surprising she makes mistakes and obvious ones like this. But we'll take a look at it to see why she is struggling. Oh dear, what a shame. Here goes. So Mary McAllen slapped down by UK Climate Minister over SNP failures as she's bemoaned Missy, uh, Rishi Sunak's net zero plans, which of course we can't have. No such thing as net zero. If she still thinks that there is, then it goes to show A, how stupid she is and B, how unfit for office she is but I'm sure she can go back to her old job and uh, you know sweeping the floor of her hairdressers on a Saturday morning is fine it's well within her skill set and it wouldn't tax her too hard it's more about her level really isn't it the Scottish government's new well-being and energy secretary aired net zero grievance with the UK government climate minister Graham Stewart who pointed out she should be dealing with Scotland's environmental failings first yeah, I mean, she's moaning about these things. We're going to have a look at them. But it, it's like, first of all, it's got none of her business. It's nothing to do with her. It's a completely different um, parliament. And secondly, moaning about what Westminster are doing while your own department is falling, about, uh, falling apart about your ears, it's hardly a good look. I mean, the optics aren't great, are they? Uh, but of course, nobody really is uh, surprised, shall we say, because this is Mary McCallan. She's not called a Saturday girl for nothing. Uh, Scotland's new wellbeing and energy secretary was brutally slapped down by a UK government climate minister after complaining about Rishi Sunak delaying net zero policies. The SNP were angered after the Prime Minister pushed back dates for a ban on selling petrol and diesel cars by five years to align it with the rest of Europe, funnily enough. Uh, and also the fact that they need all that extra time to build grid capacity. They don't have the grid. The national grid every car tomorrow went uh, electric, the national grid would fall over. It doesn't have the capability of delivering it. We all know this, but obviously for her, it hasn't quite sunk in. She hasn't got the memo. And also, and I do say this a lot, but nobody's ever answered me. What are they going to do with the petrol? There's going to be tons of petrol left and nobody's going to be using it. You can't let it evaporate. You can't burn it. You know, you can't store it. That's, that's incredibly dangerous. So what are you going to do with the petrol? Nobody's worked out that. But hey, let's save the planet. Uh, anyway, Barry McCallan claimed the plans will have detrimental effect on Scotland and demanded a summit with Westminster chiefs to discuss them. Hamza Youssef initially claimed he would keep the 2030 date for the vehicles sold in Scotland before belatedly he realised he had no choice but due to the UK Internal Market Act. There's also the fact that if he had a banned electric, sorry, banned petrol cars in 2030, all it would have meant is, you know, Honest Harry's car sales down in um, uh, Carlisle, for example, it would do a roaring trade, wouldn't it? Everyone in Scotland would be taking the train down to Carlisle and driving home in their new petrol vehicle. Uh, Ms McCallum met with Climate Minister Graham Stewart to air her issues in October, during which he made sure to explain it was not a summit, but a regular inter-ministerial meeting. And in notes from the discussion, she aired concerns about why Scottish Government were not told 
about the announcement beforehand. Because why would they? Why would they be told? This is a UK-wide policy. If you want to change it at Scottish level, you can ask, you can try, but it's not up to the UK government to inform and request your permission. That's not how these things work. Anyway, she added that she did not understand the basis for the substance of the PM announcement and highlighted the negative response from stakeholders. Well, basically, the reason he did it is, as I've mentioned, the grid can't handle it. If you can't understand that, Mary McCallan, then please pack up your bag, put everything in a little box, take your box, walk out of the Parliament and go and find a job better suited to your very limited skill set. Uh, Mr Sanak's spate of policy delays were welcomed by Scots who don't want to be forced to buy an electric car, especially during a cost of living crisis. I will point out that in 2034, I will be going out and buying myself the biggest gas guzzler I can possibly find. If I can get a 6.3 litre uh, Mercedes, I will do that out of sheer bloody mindedness. But I'll probably have to buy several cars because, you know... You're going to have to keep them running for the rest of my life. And if I can buy two two or three cars and then just turn them around. So you've always got one that's running and that should see me out. By the time 2035 comes, I mean, you're looking, what, 11 years away? I'll be uh, nearly 70, 67, getting on 68. Um, get a new car then. Or a good second hand. Or a two-year-old second hand. Can't help myself an accountant. Never buy a new car. Stupid. But get a good second hand car. A couple of years old. And I can run it for 10 20 years, well, 20 years, I'll be laughing. If I can run it for a good 10 years, I'll be happy. It'll see me out. Uh, anyway, um, it is also allegedly it won't affect the push of net zero in 2045. The rules on household heating and insulation are devolved to Scotland, so the heat pump rollback will not affect people living there. Yeah, that's right. Um, so whatever they decide to do in England with regards to gas heating, that's fine. That's what England does. Um, and, uh, you know, but Scotland, you're going to have these heat pumps whether you want them or not at the moment. The only way you can change that is to vote in a government that says, you know what, it's all bollocks. Um, the other thing, of course, is you've got to admit is that uh, heat pumps will kill people. It's undoubtedly going to happen because they don't get the water hot enough to um, kill things like Legionnaire's disease, for example. And so it will end up with people dying of that. And so it's a health and safety issue. And most houses in Scotland, like when I say most, it's something like 80% of houses in Scotland aren't suitable for heat pumps because they're old, they're falling apart, they're not very well built. You know, or any anything built sort of pre-1992, I think it is, is when they updated the, the regulations on thermal insulation. Basically, everything before 1992 is likely to be problematic. Anyway, McCallum's doubts fell on deaf ears. As Mr Stewart pointed out that she should be focusing on the Scottish government's failing to hit targets, even after promising more than anyone else. He said that the UK had met all its carbon budgets to date, and this justified the approach announced by the PM. I'm glad I'm of my age. I think I've lived through the best of times. I don't fancy being young in this day and age, because having to go through what they're about to go through, it's going to be awful, you know. But hey, you know, they keep voting these people, so what do you expect? Uh, in the meeting, he expressed the view that Scotland has set higher ambitions on net zero, but is further off delivering them than it would like. And he had pointed out that the UK government delay to the ban on new petrol and diesel cars from 2030 to 2035 is in alignment with the EU. And in doing so, the PM sought to address fears raised. There's also the fact that uh, the, um, the motor industry themselves would be having problems meeting it by 2030. So you've got that. And also the fact, again, afterwards... They haven't quite worked out a way of dealing with the battery problem and all the toxins in there. And they've noticed that they are, and you're ready for this one, already struggling to find at today's production levels all the raw materials to build them. Bada bing. And so I think um, petrol and diesel cars will be around a lot longer than people are thinking. Might not get new ones, but boy, the old ones are going to be looked after. It's going to be like Cuba. Everyone driving around in 70-year-old cars. Uh, in terms of heat pumps, he highlighted that they are a particular concern in rural areas, including in his constituency, but he's working flat out to stimulate production and supply to reduce costs. Well, you need to reduce energy costs. The cost of electricity is the only way that these things are ever, ever going to be acceptable. 
And that's only because, uh, other than the heat pump putting a little bit of heat in the house, you're going to have to run a lot of fan heaters. You know, it's the only way you're going to get the room warm. Uh, and also the fact that, again, with all that, the griddle, the griddle choke. Uh, Cancelling the need to have them uh, unless it's a new build also lifted the threat to people having to do what they don't want to do and also incre increased net uh, zero heat subsidy net zero heat subsidies. Yeah, they're saying that um, we're not forcing it onto anyone except new builds at the moment. And so uh, going forward, that's going to be the policy in England. And that's fine. Put them into new builds. But then watch as the entire housing industry collapses because nobody will buy a house with a heat pump. They want gas central heating because it's better. Uh, Sky Screen's co-leader Patrick Harvey is leading on these proposals in Scotland, but he's not an expert in anything except how to be a tit. Uh, with 2033 being the final deadline for all homes to meet energy efficiency goals, and it won't happen. Not in a million years is that going to happen. Uh, otherwise, homeowners could be punished through their mortgage or home insurance with it becoming very unpopular. And at that moment, the, uh, the government will be voted out and whoever is in there will just change the rules and Bob's your uncle. Mr Stewart pointed out the Prime Minister has reiterated the UK's commitment to delivering net zero by 2050. The UK's commitment? Surely only his commitment. Nobody asked us in a referendum if we want this. If he's so secure in that, let's have a referendum on it and let's see what the country thinks. And we will go with the result. I suspect they don't want to have a referendum because they know the answer before they ask the question. And of course, that's the problem. It's so unpopular. Nobody wants the nobody wants the crap they're trying to sell. They're pissing on your cornflakes and telling you it's milk, and they're telling you everything will be brilliant, and yet we all know that nothing will. It's all very, very expensive. It will destroy the economy. It will break the grid, and everyone will still be cold and probably dying of legionnaires. And that, I'm afraid, is the truth. And no matter how hard she thinks with her tiny little brain, it ain't gonna change, is it? She needs to go back to the hairdressers and save us all from misery. Coming up. Don't you just love it when people who haven't got a clue what they're talking about talk about things that they haven't got a clue about? Because it just highlights how stupid and ignorant they are. And all these claims they make. and that These claims are like, oh, they're this and they're that and the other. And it's all rubbish. And the thing is, we know it's rubbish. We can see it's rubbish. We know that what they're claiming is impossible. We also know that if they did try to bring this in, it would utterly destroy the economy. But they're too stupid to see that, unless they're not. And in which case they're doing it deliberately to destroy the economy. And this being green lead, that's probably closer to the truth. Anyway, stop there. Thank you very much for watching. Do please hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, leave a like, leave a comment. Please share the video and I will speak to you later. Bye.